Welcome back to the shop, guys. Rick, the honest mechanic here. I got a call today. Uh, we're gonna have to go do a sort of a rescue, I guess. We're gonna have to bring a piece of equipment here. Uh, my friend called me telling me that uh, his snowmobile isn't starting. It's in his garage right now. He's checked it out real quick, says there's no spark. And because there's no spark, it can't make its way here, can't even make its way out of the garage. So we're gonna get dressed. We're gonna fire up the Big Bear, drive down there and see if we can winch it into his trailer. So we can have it back here. It's kind of cold outside right now. I'm just going to double up on some layers. It's about uh, minus 12 degrees Celsius, which I believe is 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So something like that. So. All right, let's grab our helmet and get the bigger fired up. obviously how you doing so, uh let me know i mean tell me a little bit sorry about what is going on with the machine yeah so last year it was running fairly good um we ended up well i shouldn't say it was running good it was running kind of poorly so it needed a carb cleaning that kind of thing left my wife stranded on the side of the road well, that's not good. not happy <laughs> about uh so the, the machine spent the night uh actually no that day um i was at work so I couldn't pick it up right away, so it sat on the side of the road for about you know, five, six hours. Right. After work, went to pick it up, and uh, the thing was, uh, it was missing its uh, ignition switch. So we managed oh, no to, way. Yeah. No so way. we managed to pick <laughs> it up. Yeah, it was not good. Okay. So we managed to pick it up, me and my brother-in-law, a couple buddies, and we had to physically pick it up and put it in the trailer. So somebody was trying to... To lift it on the side of the road, yeah. Pick it up. Yeah. Okay. So... Like yeah. hot wire kind of thing. Yeah, so... Okay. Well, so we know when it's not starting, so we're going to have to try and winch it up into the trailer. Yeah. But, oh, okay, so that gives me a little bit of a look Idea into what's going on. on. Yeah. So... Yeah, so... Yeah, and, and since then, that was last year. And then that was the last trip of the year. So now it needs a little bit of loving. All right. And uh, hopefully we can get it running. Yeah, we'll get it fixed up. Yeah. That's, what, that's Excellent. what I do. So awesome. awesome. So let's figure out how to get into the trailer. I'm thinking a winch will probably be the best way. Yep. I do have a snatch block, like I was talking earlier. Yep. Go away here. We'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> We got her into the shop. We actually used a piece of uh, old bed liner to get it in here because he's got a pile of studs on this thing. And it's not easy to roll. So that actually worked out well. It was in the bottom of his trailer and it kind of came with it. It was all unplanned, but it worked out really well. So we're gonna sit, we're gonna let it sit here and kind of thaw out overnight. Uh, but before I turn in, I figured let's do a couple little quick checks here. Something very easy. Make sure that, that wasn't, let's say, in the off position, and it wasn't. Let's see if everything happens here. Okay, so we got no juice. Let's check how much voltage we have in this battery. Okay, let's set our meter volts. What do we have? Sorry, positive, negative, positive, negative. Oh, uh, we have 0.49 volts. Uh, that's not good. So, 
Let's remove this battery and see if we can give it a charge because it actually looks fairly new. All right, let's connect this up. So we got our negative and our positive. There we go. And then over here, we should have a green light saying it's charging and it's not. Probably because we have too low of a voltage on the battery. So, you know what? I got another battery here. I'm going to trick the charger into thinking that it's uh, actually charging. So give me a second, I'll get some jumper leads. So I got some jumper leads here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go positive to positive, and then we're gonna go negative to negative as well. And what that's gonna do, I know it looks crossed here, but trust me, I'm doing this right. That green light should now start. There we go, now we've got the charging. So we basically tricked the charger into thinking that it's a decent battery. And if I remove this, hopefully that light will stay green. And it does not. So this battery may be too far gone. Or what I can do is I can actually leave these on for a little while at the very least and see if I can get it up to... Uh, a decent amount of voltage so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna figure a way to get these on here for a little while while I'm working away hopefully bring up the battery and try and save it I mean it doesn't seem to be like a very old battery to me all right so we're gonna move on we're gonna check for spark so I got the uh, kill switch up in the on position I got the key in the on position we don't have a battery, but that shouldn't matter. I'm going to give this a pull. See if we have anything. Nothing so far. Nope. Definitely no spark, so there's no sense in pulling that thing over. So let's diagnose that. All right, guys, it's the next day. As you can tell, everything's melted off. And I decided to try something really quick here. I took the battery out of my uh, old Subaru just kind of tied it up like this to see if I can do any more quick testing and without having to pull it over every single time. So now we've got plenty of juice. However, we don't have plenty of spark. So what I'm going to show you here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank it. I'm going to get this thing to sit just like that on a, on a stud so we got a good ground. But what I want you to look at is a spark plug once I start releasing the key. I'm not sure if you guys can see that in the camera. I have to get it to stay there. But what's happening is when I release the key, it actually sparks for like only one spark. So hopefully you guys can see that, but that's what's happening. So let's do another easy check. And let's go to the fuses. All right, so we've got the fuses set up right over here on this machine. So we're going to remove the cover. We got our meter set for reading ohms. Listen for the beep. We got a beep. So let's check to see if all of these are good. You don't always have to remove them. This is another quick tip. If you just probe the back of the fuse just like that, you'll actually see if the fuse is still good without having to remove every single one of them. If you want to remove them, you can do that as well. We'll check the spares just in case. Nothing worse than being stuck out in the trail and your spares are bad too. Oh, this one might be bad. Oh, there it is. So all the fuses are good. Um, no, the fun part begins. I'm going to have to pull out a wiring diagram. Hopefully I can find something online. It is an older machine, so I'm going to assume so. And uh, we'll go from there. So here's the diagram guys, I got it loaded up on my screen and yes, I was lucky that the Google uh, was able to help me out with that, finding uh, something that's going to be hopefully, hopefully helpful in the long run. But looking at what I know and what I have done in the past, it's not looking good for the stator at this point. Uh, I'm thinking that's where I'm going to start, I'm going to get some readings off of the stator and then I'm going to start going towards the uh, coils. Well guys, unfortunately that did not work. I had this sitting here for 
quite some time checked on it again nothing happened the voltage did not go up at all but upon further inspection i'll just thought out a little bit i mean look at the damage here it's kind of a lost cause it's got a nice big bubble i think it may have froze uh there's actually a hole right there so i guess uh this battery's no good anymore into the recycle it goes all right guys i'm gonna end the video here uh i still have to do a little bit of research i gotta figure out what the stator uh needs for ohms i need to check those specs i also need to know what's going on with the uh the trigger coil so i need to know all those specifications i'll have those linked in the next video as well uh so I'll, again thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys in the next video